Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Jackie. And let's get started. For DIY number one, we are going to create a lemon cart out of these craft sticks. And these craft sticks came from Walmart. They're the large size, not the jumbo, but the large. And I'm just going to snip these with my EMT shears. And I'm going to cut them down to five and a half inches. And this, this will create the sides of my cart. And now I'm taking another small piece of this craft stick, two inches to be exact, and a little bit of this super glue wood glue to adhere this piece as a inside support of my little walls. Now I'm going to flip this over and I'm taking this other piece that's going to be one of the legs to this cart and this one is in six inches. Now I placed a clip on it to help keep it nice and secure while it dried. Here they are, both sides, nice and dry. Three inch pieces of craft sticks and they will be my front supports. So you will put one on each side opposite the long pieces which are the feet and set that aside and now I'm going to do the same thing for the front and back but these will measure four inches and I'll do the same thing as far as the supports place those on there and allow those to dry and cure in the meantime I'm taking two of these lemon bottle handles they're the ones that hold the bottles together yeah I save everything guys <laughs> And I'm taking my EMT shears and I'm just going to snip off and trim off these rounds and place them to the side. And now these are all nice and dry. So now I'm going to use my hot glue and I'm going to assemble my little cart because I need the immediate hold for sure on this one. So I'm just going to place these two together and I'm going to use the Dollar Tree wooden cubes to become my anchors or my supports for the insides. So I'm just going to place two for each side. So in total, you'll need eight if you want to make this or, you know, make however you want. Now I'm going to add another bead of glue and place the other side on. And of course, add my little supports. I like my supports. They make everything more solid and secure. One more. And then we'll do the back. Now the back, I ended up placing it in a different manner to where the back is a little bit longer but they're actually the same size so the front went on the front and the and the back went on the inside so it makes it look a little bit wider on the back so I did this on purpose and here are my supports now I'm ready to add my little wheels and I'm going to add a little bit of glue and place them in and they fit perfectly do the same to the second one and then I do add some more hot glue on the inside as support if you're wondering why my voice is odd, it's because I'm getting over a head cold. Just too much stress lately. <laughs> so now I'm taking some more of these craft sticks and I'm going to, these are going to be the handles and these measure seven inches, one on each side. And then I'm going to add a support on the very center and that one will measure five and a half inches. But of course you can create these however size you want. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller. It's up to you, just have fun with it. These are so cute. You can do these for flowers, for strawberries, lemons, all kinds of things. Cute little carts. But look how adorable. So once this is nice and set, now I'm gonna add a little bit of dab of glue on the back to support, and I'm gonna go in with this Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Maze, give it a full paint coat. And now I'm gonna take some of the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Snow White, and my Chunky Tippy Brush, and we're going to do a little bit of distressing and however it comes out is how I'm going to leave it. If it comes out thick, I'm going to leave it. If it comes out thin, I'm going to leave it. <laughs> but I do, I do the whole thing inside, outside, front, back, all of it, just to give it a nice cohesive look. And I just sped it up so it won't take so long, but yeah, I just want to show you, I did the whole thing. <laughs> now, once this is nice and dry, then I went in with these two plastic lemon slices that I got from Amazon and these are go on top of my little wheels because the other ones are just supports but look how they fit perfectly oh my goodness this this was made for this <laughs> and here I'm showing you that Walmart does have the lemon slices too but they're on florals and now I'm going to go in with these Dollar Tree sticker alpha stickers these are in the black and I'm going to spell out the word lemons five cents each 
and I just think these little stickers are so perfect for so many applications and I know when I use my Cricut I always say you can use Dollar Tree stickers you can use rub-on transfer stencils etc well in this video I'm going to show you some of those options so yeah once I get this nice and done then I'll take well I'll take the five cents well they didn't have the cent sign so for the cent sign I use a C and an I so I may do <laughs> now I'm just gonna take some Mod Podge to seal it up and my little cart is done I'll have to do is embellish look how cute super cute so now I'm gonna take some styrofoam and stick that inside and I'll use some of the Dollar Tree florals the lemons the wax flowers and the eucalyptus and I did add a bow at the very front with some of the new ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'll show you that later and here's how it looks and a closer look at the final reveal this video is a part of the sweet lemon kisses and honey bee wishes collaboration that I'm doing today with my sweet friend Brenda from rustic and lace DIY and we are both doing five lemon and bee DIYs today so make sure to check out her video for today it'll be linked in my description box for DIY number two I'm going to take one of these palette signs from the Dollar Tree and I'm just taking a scraper and I'm going to take it apart comes off pretty easily because just basically put together with pins and I just left two pieces together that's fine for what I'm needing and here I'm removing all the little pins definitely don't need those and now I'm going to take this and paint it with the maze full coat and now I'm going to do a different configuration I'm going to place them opposites I guess you could say or in this formation and then here's a support on the back and I'll let everything together with this super glue wood glue once that is dry I'm going to take one of these napkins this I got from Amazon I believe and I'm just going to take it down to one ply by using two pieces of painters tape and just spreading it open and it pulls it apart now I'm going to place this on my mat and I'm going to take some water and a detail brush and I'm going to paint with some water the piece that I want because I don't want a harsh edge something ripped so here it just tears off easily now I'm just gonna go in again with a little bit more detail what I want I just want this one lemon and I'm going to want to put it up here on this top left hand corner and I'm gonna take my Mod Podge this one is the satin I ran out of the mat so satin will have to do and I'm just going to place this like typical decoupaging and allow that to dry now I'm gonna take my chunky chibi brush and my snow white chalk paint and do some distressing some dry brushing of the white and again however it comes out is how it's going to stay I'm just going to have at it and have fun until it looks like this now set this aside and allow that to dry now I'm going to take these stickers here these alpha stickers I wanted to use a larger P so I'm going to cut one of these out I know it's blue but we're going to do something different and I'm going to also take these smaller letters to spell out the word pucker now my sign will say pucker up but at this moment I forgot the up <laughs> but I do add it later so now we're going to paint these stickers because I want these stickers to be white and we don't have white stickers so we're going to paint them that's just another little option you can do you can just paint up your stickers now I set this aside allow this to dry in the meantime I took two tumbling tower blocks painted them in the same manner and these are going to be the feet to my sign that way my sign can stand up on its own here I'm trying to figure out which way I wanted to use it but I ended up just going with the same lines as the palette sign in this manner and I added some heavy jars of paint to help keep it in place while it dries because I didn't use any hot glue so now here are my stickers are dry I noticed my P doesn't have a hole in it so I'm going to use my crocodile to make the hole but I need to remove this middle piece here that's inside this label or the label out of it now I can get my crocodile in there trim a little bit more of this plastic and there we go make my little hole now I just peel off my P so yeah if you're gonna do this make sure you use a plastic that you can remove the stickers and if it has any extra 
paint on the sides just kind of knock those off and then just place your little stickers look it works great paint your stickers whatever color you want and these stickers are so versatile so here again I wrote the word pucker I forgot the up <laughs> but you'll see it later <laughs> I add the up <laughs> and here I sealed it with the Mod Podge and I added a quick little cute bow this is a new ribbon I was talking about from earlier and here are the four different styles that they have these new lacy ribbons super cute so I just place my bow on there add a few little pieces of foliage just because just to you know make it cuter and that is it I do add the up later on it's not filmed but you'll see it in the final reveal or you'll see it in a minute so here are some little wax flowers that I had lying around and that is it here's how it looks and a closer look at the final reveal for DIY number three I'm taking one of these Dollar Tree breadboards and I'm going to simply take some painters tape and create a border for my paint that way I don't paint the top I just want to paint the bottom side and I'm going to go in with the Waverly chalk paint in the color Snow White remove the painters tape and now we're going to do some more decoupaging I'm going to take my finger sander to smooth it out any lumps and bumps of the chalk paint and now I have it nice and smooth now I'm taking this napkin again the one I used in the previous DIY and I'm just going to apply it as regular decoupaging I'm just going to add my Mod Podge and I'm going to add my lemon napkin on here my one ply and then add some more Mod Podge on top and to remove the excess I will do the water painting with my little detail brush to remove the excess so here I'm just going to do a little line going up going across and removing the excess napkin and save it for another time now I'm just taking my brush to help place everything nice and flush get it to get stick to the sides and allow this to dry now once it's dry I'm going to take my finger sander and go over it again make sure I get any bumps and now here is that ribbon again and this one's a different style and I'm going to take my fabric tack fabric glue and I'm just going to add a bead and place my ribbon on top of it this lacy ribbon is so pretty and I'm just going to pat it down and I'm just going to complete to the other side now I'm going to take this other new ribbon that's from the Dollar Tree it's in a yellow I think it's got little polka dots it's super super cute and I'm going to add that on there do the same thing just for a two-tone ribbon look and then I'm going to add a quick little bow here I got particular I was making this little bow but then I didn't like it so I took it apart <laughs> and I remade it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so just place it I think I was happy with this one now and then I just snip off the excess dovetail the ends of course make it look cute and I just placed it on top use some more of the fabric tech fabric glue and place it right here right at the neck super cute here's how it looks and the closer look at the final reveal for DIY number four I'm gonna take two of these galvanized little house forms remove the screws on both in this manner save them now I'm gonna take some Mod Podge give it a coat allow that to dry now I'm going to take this other napkin, I think I got this one from Amazon as well, remove it down to the one ply. This one had three plies, so I had to do it twice to remove the, all the plies. And now I'm just going to place this one on top. This one I'm doing a different technique. I'm going to do the, the iron method, but first I'll go ahead and do the wet brush method too to remove the excess. I just think this is the easiest way to tear napkins or tissue paper too but just like this just tears right off now i'm placing a piece of parchment paper and using my mini easy press to adhere this napkin onto the galvanized metal it activates the mod podge so now i'm going to flip it over it's a little bit hot so just be careful and place my other piece 
on top and do the same thing place my parchment paper and use my mini easy press to activate this whole section of Mod Podge like this and now I'm going to do the same thing to the second little house this time I'm placing some napkin paper underneath the house and a piece on the top because the little house got hot <laughs> see I learned something <laughs> So now I'm using my mini easy press to activate all the Mod Podge. It worked perfectly. Flip it over. It's pretty, it's pretty adhered on the back side too, but I'll go ahead and run the mini easy press on it as well. And now I'll just set this aside so the whole thing will cool down because these pieces are pretty warm. <laughs> so now here are the base pieces. I'm just going to take my finger, san finger sander to sand up any adhesive that's on one side and any splinters on the other side. And now I'm going to go in with my Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Maze again. Give them a full coat. Set those aside. Now these are nice and cool. I'm ready to trim the excess napkin paper. Because we're about to take my lighter and light it up. And the less napkin paper you have overage, the smaller your flame will be. So if you have a lot of napkin paper left over, you're going to have a pretty good flame. So we're trying to avoid that. Now here you see the flame is a decent size and it's going around contouring to the little house form which is exactly what we want. Now I'm taking a clip to do the middle side because the flame got a little bit large but it did a good job. And here's the excess on the very bottom and I did both in this manner until they look like this. And look how cute. Now I'm going to place these back onto their bases. I'm going to add the screws back on to both just like this. Now I'm going to take some Mod Podge and I'm going to seal everything up and allow that to dry. Once that's dry, which it is here, now I'm going to take some of the wood glue, super glue, and I'm going to add a small bead on one side of this base, placing the two bases together because we are creating a napkin holder. Yeah, one of my viewers on TikTok suggested it, so I thought I'm going to do it. So that's a wonderful idea. I loved it. So now here I'm going to use these rub-on transfers to embellish my napkin holder. And I'm going to use the word welcome and the word home. And I'll also use these other pieces on the sides. But I'll use them on the bottom of this piece because it doesn't fit on the top as they had it. So here I'm just using my fingernail to rub on the transfer. It's my favorite way to do this. I've tried other tools but... My fingernails always work the best. So here is the home. We'll do the home to the back side. Place that on there and rub, rub, rub. I think I do the two finger method here. <laughs> hey, whatever works. <laughs> whatever works to get this accomplished. <laughs> and just like that, super cute. And here are the little pieces. I don't show them all, but I show one. Do those. And once I get these on there, then I'm ready to do some more embellishing. And in my stash, I had these cute little wooden beads. They're lemon and lime shapes. And I just add those on the sides and a little bit of florals. And that is it. Super cute. And here it is holding napkins. This is the welcome side. And then this is the home side. And the closer look at the final reveal. For DIY number five, I'm taking these two empty paint cans. And I'm going to take this mixture of white acrylic paint by Apple Barrel and some baking soda and I'm going to cover them completely and then go in with the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Maze. Then I had these two little pots that had already the styrofoam inside and all I'm going to do is add these florals and these lemons and that is it for this one. Super quick, super cute. Oh and this ribbon. This is how they look and a closer look at the final reveal. For DIY number six, we're heading over to the bees. Now I'm taking one of these lemon bottles and I'm going to go in with the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Hazelnut. And I'm also going to go in with this decorative nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. And all I'm going to do is simply take some hot glue and this rope and wrap this whole bottle around. Wrap it all up like I would with twine. But instead this is rope. And I'll just go all the way around until it looks like this. Here's the very bottom. I add a nice glob of glue on the inside and snip off the excess. It's just too much here, so I snip off the excess. 
and then I tuck in the end very carefully because I did fill the bottom with some glue so just carefully tuck it in there now for the very tip top I'll take some more of the rope and go around and once I run out of bottle top to adhere the rope then I'll just use the actual rope to adhere it to itself as I go up in a peak and then the very top I'll just do the same thing as I did at the bottom I'll snip off the excess and I'll just tuck it inside and it'll be seamless it looks super cute so here I'm just gonna continue to go then now I'm adhering it to the rope itself because I ran out of the bottle top and now I'll snip off the excess and just tuck it inside with a little bit of glue and that is it look it's seamless super cute and now I'm gonna take another piece of this rope and cut it and take some hot glue and adhere it from one end to the other to create a circle for the opening of this beehive and I make sure it's not gonna be too large and I'm gonna take the hot glue and place some hot glue all the way around this piece and then just kind of like slap it on there so I don't burn my hand now I'm gonna take some of the Dollar Tree chalkboard paint I love this paint and I'm running out so I better find me some more soon and I'm just gonna take a detail brush and fill in the inside portion of this little beehive like this and then allow that to dry and now I'm gonna take some hot glue in the yellow that I got from Amazon and I'm going to create some faux honey whenever I get done with this <laughs> and here's my hot glue oh no take my lighter take my lighter first and burn all the fuzzies yeah I did that first that's right now I'm gonna take my hot glue and create my faux honey and I do a generous amount and kind of place this whole bottle in upside down position to help the glue kind of kind of like drip out kind of let it set in that more in that manner and I'm going to take some of these tiny wooden bees these I got from Amazon the larger ones are from Dollar Tree but these teeny tiny ones are from Amazon and I'll just place them in various places and then I also take some more hot glue and add the drip to be a little bit more profound and then I went in with some florals I went in with these wildflowers from Walmart these here are super cute and also a cute bow made out of Dollar Tree ribbon and here is the bottle and the beehive next to each other here's how it looks and a closer look at the final reveal for DIY number seven I am taking a few of these toilet paper cardboard rolls and I'm going to smash it in this manner and cut them to about an inch or so and then I do quite a few now I'm going to try and create a hexagon form with these never did never done this before so <laughs> it's a learning curve here so I'm trying to fold so many little folds to create these little hexagons now the first one doesn't look all that great it's kind of like when you make pancakes the first one's always messed up but my second one looks better <laughs> I think I kind of figured it out I don't know you guys tell me does it look like a hexagon to you kind of sort of <laughs> so now I'm going to take my hot glue and I'm just going to adhere each of these pieces onto the other and trying to keep that honeycomb formation and I just keep doing this until I get them to look like this. Now I'm going to take some of the Waverly chocolate in the color Maze, give them a light coat. And I'm going to take this triangle piece of cardboard and these remnant pieces of this fabric that already has a layer of Mod Podge. But we're going to add some more so we can adhere this to the triangle. Now I'm placing my fabric on top and covering it all up in pieces. And then taking parchment paper and my mini easy press and it activating all the mod podge to adhere the fabric onto the cardboard triangle so now i make sure everything's nice and adhered and now i take my scissors and snip off all the excess i don't do the sanding because there's cardboard underneath oh and i also add 
another layer for sealing the Mod Podge. So now here I snipped off the excess. Now I'm placing my formation on top and I'm going to use a pen to cut a little bit more contoured to these pieces here. I want it to look a little bit more, I don't know, detailed. <laughs> so here I go ahead and snip it off, trim all those pieces. Now I'm going back in with my Fabric Tech fabric glue and I'm gonna go around the edges of this whole piece and then placing my formation on top and allow that to set. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to remedy that with some faux honey hot glue. So here I am taking this Dollar Tree cutting mat and I'm going to go in with this faux honey glue and I'm adding the mat just in case the glue seeps out and it won't stick to the other mat. And here it is, look, super cute, nice and set. I'm gonna go in with some more of this decorative nautical rope and I'm going to just cover the whole side of it because uh, it has the cardboard that you can see. I don't want the cardboard showing, the edges of the cardboard. So I'm just gonna place this on the bottom and adhering it a little piece and then just go around this whole formation a good three times. And I'll just go around this whole thing like this. And I really think this gives it a nice look. So here I snip off the excess, place another bead of glue and place it on. And now you guys probably can't see it, but there's a ton of glue webs everywhere. And the easiest way to get rid of it is to take a heat gun and basically it melts them away. So it's, it's a fantastic little hack. And if you guys hear purring, it's my little girl. She's laying on me and she's just purring away. <laughs> so now here I am taking some hot glue, putting a bead down and placing a bamboo skewer on there and placing some more glue to help secure it in place because this is going in a planter. And now here is my planter. I got this from Dollar General for a dollar and I'm taking some styrofoam, placing it in the bottom and some rocks for weight. And I add some floral moss just to cover everything up. And then I'm going in with some florals. I'm going to use these florals from, well, this one's from the Dollar Tree. This one is from Walmart, Boxwood. And I add another floral as well later, but I don't show it. And I also add a ribbon to the planter, which I don't show either. These were like afterthoughts. So here I'm just placing my florals in. And once I get them in where I want them, which I ended up changing them out, I ended up using the same florals, but changing their position once I added my honeycomb little formation. Oh, and I also added some bees, some bees to the little honeycomb. Yeah. <laughs> so here's my honeycomb, put it back in. And here it is sitting on my craft table. And here's how it looks and the closer look at the final reveal. For DIY number eight, I'm going to use these ice cream lids that my hubby and I love to eat this kind of ice cream. And I'm going to adhere them together to kind of sandwich them. Now this one here, there was one that wasn't a good size and it wasn't fitting right. So I swapped it out for the other one on the table. Then it fit better. <laughs> I finally gave up. So now I added some more hot glue and now here, now that these fit better. And now I'm taking the extra one and I'm just going to adhere this to the first piece. And now I'm happy with them. So now I'm gonna take some of the Dollar Tree chalkboard paint and give them a full coat. And now I'm gonna use these honeycomb shaped silicone molds and I'm gonna fill them up with my faux honey hot glue and get it nice and covered. And then using my two silicone spatulas, I'm going to push it down. That way all the glue gets down into all the nooks and crannies and wait for this to set and cool. Once it's set, then I just go ahead and peel it off and look at that, a little honeycomb. Now here I did a bunch of them and now I'm gonna take my detail scissors and I'm going to snip off enough to create a jigsaw puzzle kind of 
piece that way I can place them together and so here I'm just trying to figure out how to get them to fit perfectly like a puzzle now once I get all these snipped off and get the puzzle shape to match then I take my detail glue gun and add the tiniest bit of glue and place these together and I do this to two of them make two different formations and once I'm happy with them then I'll set them aside to completely set and then in the meantime I'm going to take my hot glue gun again and I'm going to do a little bit of detail on these faux trinket boxes now here as I place this glue it's going to look like it's clear but it's actually yellow and you'll see it once the glue dries and sets you'll see that it's actually a yellow so here it is kind of looks like a cake too maybe I don't know but to me I want these to be just some faux trinket boxes for a tear tray and now I'm taking my hot glue gun and going around going around the whole top edge to give it another bit of interest and I just take my time go all the way around and I do this to both of the boxes and I also go ahead and take my heat gun to remove any webs and then I adhere the honeycombs on top of these little faux trinket boxes like this now here I also did some sunflowers with some other molds that I had and I'm gonna go ahead and adhere these onto my little trinket boxes I wanted another little feature for the fronts or should I say the sides of these trinket boxes so I'm just gonna place them right here and I think I do two no I think I do three three on each one and it's looking super cute. So now I'm taking some of this rub, rub and buff paint and I'm just going to rub it all over the edges of all of the yellow hot glue, wherever it's at. And I'm just having a good time just rubbing this on. I think this stuff is addicting. Once you start rubbing it on and seeing the effect, you just go for the gusto. So I did the whole thing wherever there was glue it got some rub and buff <laughs> but look how cute oh my goodness this is so cute out of lids <laughs> ice cream lids look how adorable so now i'm gonna go in with these little bees and then that is it super cute here's how they look and the closer look at the final reveal and here we are the oi number nine for this one i am taking another one of these breadboards and i'm taking these extra rub-on transfers that i had left over from another video I really like these flowers. I think they're gorgeous. I didn't get a chance to use them, so I'm going to use them now. And I'm not painting this board with anything because I like the colors of this rub-on transfer against the natural wood. So this one's going to be really easy. Okay, so here I am trying to use my, my Cricut spatula, but no, I go back to my fingernail. <laughs> it's tried and true. <laughs> Now here it is all done look at this look how cute oh look at that oh my goodness that's so cute and so there's this little pack brings plenty of little bees so you know how to use all those so I use a few for the front and just use my fingernail again and now I turned over the breadboard I want this to be double-sided now this piece here is hard to see but it's actually a honeycomb very detailed and a very intricate little design so this one took me a good while to rub it all onto the board. It took me, I don't know, 10 minutes maybe for just this piece. So I obviously didn't record the whole thing. <laughs> but look, it's so adorable. And I still had some bees left, so had to use those too. Just had to. I was calling my name. So I added all my bees, and then I was happy with the look. I didn't add any bows. I didn't feel like I needed any bows, any paint, any Mod Podge. I just left it like that. Super cute. And here I just, I couldn't help it. Just had to use all the little bees I had left. So I had one to the top of this side. And then my very last one, I turn over the breadboard and place it on the bottom like this. Now I'm super happy with it. No florals other than what's printed on the breadboard. No bows, no paint, no Mod Podge, nothing. Look how adorable. And here's how it looks. And a closer look at the final reveal. Oh, here's the back. Here's the back. 
for DIY number 10 and my last DIY, I am taking these beads that I got from Amazon and some of the Chanel stems from Dollar Tree and I'm going to snip off these stems in this manner, just these little pieces. I think they're about two inch pieces or so. And now I'm going to take one of these beads with the rings on them and I'm going to take two of the Chanel pieces and create the body of a bee. Now I'm going to take a tiny little piece and put it on the bottom for a stinger. Then I'm going to take a smaller bead and I'm going to put two more smaller Chanel stems in there and create the antennas and then the bottom part I kind of roll it with my finger and a little bit of hot glue and place it in the body for its head. Look how cute. <laughs> These are great for the kiddos to make. I think they're adorable. So then I went ahead and made them all like this. Now for its wings, I went through my stash and found this one piece of lace that I had left over. I didn't want to throw it away. And I'm snipping off all the sections of it so I can use them for their wings. And then I'm going to cut those in half and then contour the ends to kind of replicate wings. And then taking my fabric tack fabric glue placing a bead on top or a little a little dab on top and placing the little pieces of of lace and look how cute now for the other part of this DIY I'm taking two recycled glass jars these are from olives and I'm taking some of these stickers these jewel stickers from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to hear them on to the top and the bottoms of both of these jars and going all the way around sniffing off the excess until it looks like this. Now I'm going to take some Mod Podge and I'm going to give them a full coat because I'm going to be doing a coating and I don't want it to fall off. So now I'm going to take my baking soda and my acrylic paint and this is what I use for my lemon planters. I actually did this DIY first so that's why I'm mixing it up now. And I'm just using the regular matte white apple barrel paint mixing it all up with a bamboo skewer and then with a the brush I'm going to paint it onto these jars to give it a nice texture and like this allow that to dry completely now once that dries I'm going to go in with my Waverly chalk paint in the color maize give them a full coat now with my finger sander I'm going to sand off some of the spots where the jewels were to help reveal the texture and also on the sides to help reveal the white of the paint to give it that interest. Now I'm not going to know they're looking so now I'm going to take some of this Tim Holtz distressing ink and my applicator and I'm going to go in I'm going to go in on the top edge and where the jewels stickers are and on the center as well just here and there just to give it a cute look and I'll add florals to it and that is it super cute and here's how they look if you're on instagram i invite you to come follow me on there i post on there every day during the week same as my tiktok here's my pinterest handle here is my crafting group on facebook i invite you to come join us and now we're at the final reveal let me know what you guys think which one's your favorite one
want to take a moment and thank Brenda from Rustic and Lace DIY for collaborating with me in this fun video theme, the bees and the lemons. I had a lot of fun creating for it. Don't forget to head on over to my description box and click the link to her channel, to her video, and watch her video today. She's also doing 10 DIYs as well. And I'll also pin it in my comments just for easy access. And make sure you give her a visit and say hello, tell her I sent you, give her a subscribe. She is very talented and you guys are going to just love her. She's so sweet. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you want to see more, definitely subscribe. And until my next video, stay healthy, safe, and strong. And have a great, great day. Bye-bye. My voice is done. Bye-bye. <laughs>